good evening. Can you all see me and hear me fine? So let's start. Um, the topic for the day is uh, retroperitoneum. It is an important topic in terms of uh, uh, theory questions as well. You do get uh, uh, a long note on this uh, and uh, apart from that, in in you know actual reporting of cases, what I'm about to teach you, uh, you know how you localize different compartments in the abdomen. This is very important for the long cases as well. You know the whole approach that whether it's in the retroperitoneum, how do you localize it? Uh, whether it's primary retroperitoneal or secondary retroperitoneal. So all of those points we are going to be looking at, and then we'll be looking at a lot of cases mainly. So. Um, not very heavy on approach this one, uh, but but we'll see a wide spectrum of cases, right? So that's something uh, that we'll be doing today. Just give me a confirmation if you guys can see me and hear me fine, and then I'll just start. Okay. <laughs> when will be motivation session? Um, this weekend. Let's see. I will try. I mean, not this weekend, like the coming weekend, next weekend, we can try that for sure. Um, I'll be free now. Uh, uh, once need is over, then I have all of the time in the world. We can do many more sessions. As of now, so we're doing a lot of sessions, but we can definitely have one after that. where We can just talk about how to approach recipe, um, you know, and, and stuff like that. All right. Uh, so let's begin with um, retroperitoneum. For... First thing and the toughest thing probably here is the anatomy. So that's what you have to uh, really do. Yeah, I have talked to her uh, uh, Siddhi for uh, transcranial ultrasound. She uh, said she'll finish a uh, recipe and then she'll take it up. It's better if you learn it from her because uh, she is, you know, specialized in pediatrics. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Tani will also be taking, Tani is in fact taking another class on 15th, right? So she'll be covering uh, women's imaging initially and then you can ask her, You she'll ask you what topics you want and then you can give your, her your request. So next session is on 15th, okay? All right, can we start with this? Yeah, just starting now. All right, so uh, let's start off with the anatomy of the retroperitoneum. Very, very important. Uh, just uh, actually, it's not that tricky, but the names, you know, can get overwhelming. Okay, Chalo, let's start. I'll take your feedback later on. I know you always have feedback, but let's start this first. So the retroperitoneum is something, first of all, craniocaudal. Retroperitoneum is something which is starting from the diaphragm superiorly and extending till the pelvic brim. So this is superior uh, craniocaudal caudal extent right that you have to remember so continues from the diaphragm till the pelvis but not all of the spaces are going to continue down till the pelvis that's what is very important so let's look at what are the different parts within this entire retroperitoneum so the anterior boundary of retroperitoneum what is pp here is the parietal peritoneum right so let me just write it for you so that when you revise it from the pdf this makes sense so this is the parietal peritoneum which is anterior and the posterior boundary of the retroperitoneum is going to be transversalis fascia. Okay, so these are the anteroposterior boundaries of the retroperitoneum. Now, what are the spaces in So first of all, let's look at this anterior pararenal space anterior to the kidney. So, this is the kidney. Ko samaj lete hai. So, this here is the perirenal space. The perirenal space has anterior renal fascia and posterior renal fascia. Can somebody tell me what do we call the anterior renal fascia? Anterior renal fascia ka naam kya hota hai? This is called as girotas fascia. Okay. So, anterior, good. Anterior renal fascia is girotas fascia. And what do we call the posterior renal fascia? Post, very good. Posterior renal fascia is called as Zucker Candles fascia. Okay. So, itna samaj aaya. So, anterior and posterior renal fascia together are making our perirenal space. Perirenal space mein kya hai? Obviously, we have the kidney, we have adrenal and we have the proximal ureters here, right? So that is what is happening along with a few lymphatics, right? So we have a few lymphatics. That's important because we can have lymphatic malformations. We can have lymphangiectasias here, right? So that's why we need to know that it's a part of the perirenal space. So this is 
perirenal space up anterior to the perirenal space so anterior to the perirenal space so if they ask me boundaries of anterior perirenal ab easy ho gaya na aage parietal peritoneum aur piche gyrotas fascia ठीक है एंड साइड में हमेशा वी विल हैव लेटरल कोनल फेशिया सो लेटरल बाउंड्रीज आल्सो सॉर्टेड इट्स एल सी एफ विच इज लेटरल कोनल फेशिया सो बाउंड्रीज समझ में आ गई व्हाट आर द फेशियल आउटलाइन एवरीबडी सो नाउ कम टू एंटीरियर पैरा रीनल स्पेस व्हाट आर द कंटेंट्स इन द एंटीरियर पैरा रीनल स्पेस एंड दीज आर दर्गन that you know are retroperitoneal organs so what can you see we have colon which two part of colon are retroperitoneal so we have the ascending colon and we have the descending colon which are going to be in the anterior pararenal space with pancreas pancreas is going to be in the anterior pararenal space and then we have the duodenum which part of duodenum is not retroperitoneal basic anatomy D1, right? So D1 is the only part which is not retroperitoneal. D2, D3, and D4 are all going to be in the anterior pararenal space. So these are our contents of the anterior pararenal space. We have colon, pancreas, and we have duodenum except the D1 part. Is this clear? Are you guys understanding? Anterior boundary. parietal peritoneum posterior boundary anterior renal fascia gyrotas fascia lateral boundary lateral conal fascia perirenal space is sorted gyrota zucker candle unite to form the perirenal space now it's important to understand that perirenal space doesn't continue down into the pelvis seedha seedha it is a cone right so it is spaced like this so inferiorly it just tapers right so it doesn't continue down into the pelvis that is important right so you can i'll just draw this for you that perirenal space is like a cone doesn't continue in the pelvis fir chalte hain posterior pararenal space posterior pprs is the posterior pararenal space here so again the boundaries are pretty simple now right gyrotas fascia hai aur fascia transversalis hai so that is the posterior pararenal space yahan pe kuch khas nahi hai it's only connective tissue which is there all right so this is what is our posterior pararenal space here which does not meet in the midline that is important ki ye midline mein meet nahi kar raha right so that's what you have to remember that this does not meet in the midline and this is what will continue down throughout the pelvis this is continuous from diaphragm till pelvis idhar kya hai idhar se fat hai aur connective tissue hai with some nerves so that is what is living here in the posterior pararenal space and then we have this pseudo space this is not a true space because it is not lined by fascia it is just what is left right so this is what is our vascular space where you have ibc and aorta so this is not a real space real space which is outlined by fascia are three anterior pararenal perirenal posterior pararenal and then we have our vascular space okay so this is what we need to remember about the spaces these are the primary spaces now how do we look at it on a ct so normally we will not see the fascia but you will see the fascia where is posterior pararenal space this one can you see this this right let me use this pointer can you see this this is the posterior pararenal space see this all right look at this diagram now carefully okay what do i do i'll use a highlighter okay so can you see this is all what i have highlighted yellow i think you'll understand better when i show you on a ct this is all anterior pararenal space and what i am highlighting with green is the posterior pararenal space whatever is left which is not shaded is the peri renal space right so that is what you have to do i think you'll understand better here so here what is the anterior pararenal space is a case of pancreatitis you see a lot of infiltration can you see this facial outline so this here is our entire anterior pararenal space we can see the ascending colon the descending colon and the pancreatitis which is all having a lot of fat stranding here okay can you make out this fascia now the thickening of the fascia the renal fascia we can see because of the inflammation otherwise we'll obviously not see the fascia so this makes it 
the perirenal space and the thin part behind which you know you are not really seeing very well is the posterior pararenal space okay so this is what you need to remember that just near the kidney and just behind the kidney will be posterior pararenal space okay so this is what you have to remember here next let's go to the interfacial plane so now 